What's up guys, Alton here with another video. And um, just yesterday, which was March 15th of 2021, so I can kind of put this video in perspective for those who may watch it later. I did a video about Kirk Franklin and him having a dispute with his son, right? He was cursing his son out and his son actually recorded the conversation and he posted it on social media and it basically went viral. All right. Um, now I did my video. I didn't really get too much into talking about Kurt Franklin and my personal views about Kurt Franklin. I mean, if you guys have been following my channel, if you've seen some of my past videos, you guys know I've been critical of Kurt Franklin, um, you know, just at different times. So I did the video and it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't really geared towards him. It was geared towards believers who have ministries, uh, you know, whether it's a YouTube ministry, whether they're pastors, elders of a church, missionaries, um, you know, etc. And I was in that video, I was the driving point was that us as men, we have to be very careful of how we raise our children concerning the faith. How much time are we spending in the ministry versus time with our family? Because if we are neglecting our family, you can end up having um, a situation with Kirk Franklin and his son. So that's basically what 90% of the video was about and it wasn't really talking about Kirk Franklin but you got the people who are they have very short attention spans these are, these are the people that don't watch past the three or four minutes of the video they see the title they see the thumbnail it's into like 10 seconds of the video then they turn around and they make a comment so and I'm not going to call them the ignoramuses, but I, I, I really want to just call these people the ignoramuses, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to extend some grace and say, okay, maybe these are people who are just ignorant to, some, <laughs> to a certain degree, right? Anyway, I started getting comments on this video where people were, oh, well, you know, don't, don't judge uh, Kirk Franklin because... You know, we, we've all had issues. We've all had, uh, you know, times where we've said something behind closed doors and it wasn't appropriate, blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. Now, I wasn't going to make a video. I wasn't going to make this video. I was just going to just leave it alone. I was going to say, okay, I already had this. I've already said what I had to say. I was going to leave it alone. So I'm watching the video, and I hate the name drop because I don't want people getting... You know, because sometimes you'll have people who do like my content and they may prefer my content over others, and I appreciate that. Um, but I don't want other people to be attacked. Like, for instance, uh, Alan Parr made a video. Right now, first of all, I'm subscribed to Alan Parr. I like his content. Um, I've been edified through some of his videos, and, you know, I have learned some things from Alan Parr. Now, there's a couple of things that I do think that he says, which I disagree with, okay? Now, again, this does not make him a heretic. This does not mean that, you know, people need to go to his uh, YouTube channel and flag his videos and thumbs them down and send all types of hateful comments to his video. Not, I'm not advocating for any of that. You know what I'm saying? If you guys are a follower of mine and you see this video, what I'm about to say all I ask is that, um, you know, you you just just act in grace. You know what I'm saying? Um, don't go over there being a belligerent or anything like that. But anyway, Alan Parr made a video, and he I think it was about ten things that he said that us as Christians what we need to learn from the Kirk Franklin situation, right? And just to kind of sum it up, what he said, um, 
basically he was saying in a nutshell that Kirk Franklin uh, we should basically try to and I'm choosing my words carefully uh, he said something to the effect of, uh, of we shouldn't judge Kirk Franklin based on this action right because there's been times where we may have said something or we, we may have done things and it may not have been appropriate or you know sometimes we, you know as Christians we do stumble we fall and uh, you know, just on and on, he, he just kind of went about that. He gave like five different reasons of why we should, you know, uh, look at this differently. Now, his whole thing was let's kind of extend some grace to Kirk Franklin and let's just try to understand where he's coming from. And he may have been put in a compromised position and, you know, we've all been there I understand that I get it but let's be honest and let's be real right now Kirk Franklin if I'm not mistaken I think Kirk Franklin is in his 50s and he has been into the ministry from what I've heard majority of his life if not all of his life Okay, he's been in the church grew up in the church and I can tell you for probably the last, at least the last 30 years, 25 at the most, um, or 25 at the least, but it, at least for the past 25 years, he's had his music ministry. Um, because I remember when he came out with the, with, with the song Stomp, and a lot of people, when that came out, that, you know, a lot of people were just like, Ugh, I don't know if this guy should be making making songs like this, you know, like this, he's kind of teetering a little bit uh, by remixing, I think it was one of the Parliament songs or something, he took some secular song and he just remixed it. And that's what he's known for, for taking these songs, secular songs and remixing them into gospel tracks. So therefore Christians can have something to, they, they won't feel guilty when they're listening to music that sounds secular, but it has a godly message behind it. Now, he's been doing this for at least 25 years. 30 can be argued, all right? Kirk Franklin should have known better. He should have known better. At 50 years old, if you've been in the faith, majority of, all your life, majority of your life, and you have the attitude that you have, you should be ashamed of yourself as a Christian. You should really be ashamed of yourself. I can say, me as a Christian now, I probably came to the faith, give or take, 10 or 11 years ago. That's when I really started to get, um, that's when the Lord, I'm not going to say me, but the Lord started opening my eyes and started leading me to him about 10 years ago. Now, when I first got into the faith, I was not a big know-it-all. I didn't know half of the stuff that I know now. I didn't study as much of the stuff that, I, that that I'm studying now. But with me just being in the faith 10 years, there is no possible way that I would have a conversation or use a language that Kirk Franklin used against his own son. No way possible. There's no Christian that I know who's been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, what react the same way that Kirk Franklin did. There's no excuse for that. So anybody who's given these excuses of, oh, well, you know, he just had a weak moment and all of this. One thing that I do agree with Alan Parr, I totally agree with this. He said that just based on that conversation, he knows, or we can all conclude that Kirk Franklin most likely has been using this type of language. Like, you know, he's always been like this. And it's probably surprising to us because none of us, we don't know Kirk Franklin like that. But most likely, and I agree with Will Allen Parr again, that Kirk, that Kirk Franklin been using language like this. This is how he is behind closed doors. And we've seen his past actions. We've seen the way he's been, you know, yucking it up and shucking and jiving with all these secular artists. 
whenever he's asked questions about the faith and what's sin and what's not, he's always dancing and skirting around the issue. A ask him about ask him about marriage and, and homosexuality. Uh, 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 well, I'm just gonna. Uh, uh, well, well, the Bible says that we shouldn't judge it, and he's just constantly, he's just constantly doing that, fumbling and bumbling and, and with his words, all the time. Whenever he's asked straight up questions about his faith. So we know that there's always been problems with Kirk Franklin's salvation. Remember when, I think it was back in the early 2000s or the or the late 90s, where um, he had confessed that he was struggling with pornography and lust and all of this stuff here? Okay, I get it. You struggle with that stuff back in the day. You've been delivered from it. Praise God. Hallelujah. But just to see the repetitiveness of him just not really not really showing the fruits of the spirit year in and year out year in and year out it just seems like every once in a while there's some scandal with this guy I, I think I've already made maybe about three or four videos about him about some of the stuff that he's been caught up in or his his response to or what his response should be when, when he's asked about the gospel, where he's totally botched it and failed every time, we got to start questioning this man's salvation. Especially after this video. I don't care what anyone says. And here's the thing. The reason why a lot of you, and I'm talking to you guys who don't like videos like this, critiquing Kurt Franklin, the reason why you guys don't like videos like this is because deep down, you want to be able to do what Kurt Franklin is doing. Or you're probably doing what Kurt Franklin is doing behind closed doors. So therefore, when somebody else validates him, or you want to give him validation, because you know that if you, or when you get exposed for doing the same thing that he's doing, cursing and use a foul language just because he's upset, then you can be able to have that validation to say, well, see, you know, Kirk Franklin did it. Y'all got to extend the same grace to me, the same way that y'all did to Kirk. Because if you are a true Christian and you have been renewed by the Holy Spirit, you will not react that way. Why? Because Jesus said, be angry, but sin not. And I heard that little tired apology that he gave. And he's like, well, you know, uh, my words are inappropriate, but I'm human. I'm not perfect. Duh. We know that. And guess what? Humans go to hell. Imperfect humans go to hell. So what are you saying? What are you saying when you, when you say that? So what? Are you trying to say that you're not striving for perfection? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to carry out our salvation with fear and trembling. And Kurt Franklin is not doing that. And another thing I want to touch on is that People want to say, well, Kurt Franklin wasn't wrong for what he did. He had a son that's that's going out here and he's going astray. Kurt Franklin, as being that man's father, has not shown him the love of Christ. I don't care what anybody says. That call shows that he does not show the love of Christ to his son. I don't care if somebody said, well, back in the day, we ain't talking about back in the day. We're talking about now. You're supposed to be consistent, showing the love of Christ from beginning to end. Kurt Franklin is leading his son to hell by provoking his own child. That's what he did. He provoked his own son to anger. Now his son is taking that anger and that wrath out on Kirk Franklin. And instead of Kirk Franklin showing him the love of Christ, he's investing in some, some family therapist. How, how long you done been in the ministry? How long you been reading the Bible? And you mean to tell me that you push the Bible aside to, to reach out to some therapist, and most likely it's a secular therapist. Which number one, it ain't working. Because there's no way that you and your you and your son would have had this conversation if the therapy was working. Oh, we've been going through therapy. It ain't working. And we know you ain't using the Bible. Because there's no way that you could be a person using the Bible, acting the way that you were acting and talking the way that you were talking. 
No way. No, ain't, ain't no true believer doing that. He is provoking his son to anger and he is leading his son to hell. This whole, when you become a Christian, this ain't no cultural thing. And a lot of people think that this is what this is. Oh, it's all about some church culture. No, there's a lot of people that is in, who calls themselves Christian, who are wrapped up in this church culture. They are going to hell, guys. Let's not forget that. This is why we, again, the Bible says that we have to uh, practice our salvation with fear and trembling. We got to do that. This is not a game out here. And this is the reason why I made my video yesterday because I want people to understand that when we have children and when we have families, we have to make sure that we're not provoking them to anger. We don't want to we don't want any of our children to end up being led down a path towards Satan because of us dropping the ball. And that's exactly what's happening with Kurt Franklin and his son. You are supposed to be the man, a man of God at that, who is supposed to be leading your son in the righteousness. You're supposed to be showing him the love of Christ of anything else. Anything. And he's failing on that part. And I can't believe that you got some idiots out there that is trying to defend what Kurt Franklin did. They trying to defend what he did. And he get that lame apology. And then he turns around and, and talks about, you know, like I say, he talks about this, this, this whole therapy thing. And then he wants to try to put the accountability on his son. Oh, this is a private matter. I, I don't care if it was a public matter. You're still not supposed to act the way that you were acting. Doesn't matter. And one thing that gets me about a lot of these fake and phony Christians. Yes, it's a lot of these fake and phony Christians out here. It's a lot of them. That's why people who are in the faith, they ain't dumb. They know when a lot of y'all are fake and phony. But the problem is, is that y'all go out there and support foolishness and call yourselves Christians. And then it makes it harder for us as real Christians to witness to other people who are out there who've already walked away from the faith. You look at Frank, Kurt Franklin's son. How, how easy do you think it's going to be for a person who's been saved by Christ to go out and witness to this man. Not going to happen. They got a very slim chance of getting to, getting through to that guy. It, it will take a miracle. It will take the intercession of the Holy Spirit to bring Kurt Franklin's son to salvation because he's been raised in that all his life and he's just been seeing the, the, the hypocritical acts through his own father. And that's why a lot of these people do not want anything to do with the church because they've seen the hypocrisy because a lot of y'all idiots go out there and you want to, oh, let's not judge Kurt Franklin and all. You better read Ephesians 5 and 11. We're supposed to put out the, um, uh, put out the evil one, put the evil one out of the camp. You think that the God of the Old Testament who had zero tolerance for sin this type of stuff going on and somehow he's okay now he's okay with it now no he's not he's going to judge Kurt and he's going to judge his son the same if they both don't come to repentance and follow him and Kurt's son and Kurt and the blood of Kurt's son is on Kurt Franklin's hands if he do not repent and start ministering to his son because he's the issue he's the problem just like a lot of you are the problem of why your families, why a lot of y'all are saved, but your kids ain't. Yeah, I'm talking to a lot of y'all out there. A lot of y'all running around here watching videos like mine. You on YouTube, you probably going to church and doing all types of Christian stuff. What your kids doing? Watching Cardi B, watching WAP. Out here listening to Future. Doing whatever. Kids ain't saved. Y'all got teenagers walking around here doing whatever. Ain't saved, but you so saved. So that's how we know that a lot of y'all are just cultural Christians. And I'm not going to try to hold y'all up too much longer, man. I just got to get all of this out. But you know what's so funny? 
And, and I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. I know I am. <laughs> Some of y'all are set back and talk about the Hebrew Israelites. Y'all want to bash the Hebrew Israelites. Y'all want to say whatever about them. And here's the thing. Hebrew Israelism is dangerous. Cult-like mentality. The, the doctrines are heretical. I don't care what anybody says. Y'all know where I stand on that. But when these folks leave the church because of hypocrisy that they see from some of you guys out there, at least some of these people are actually diving into the Bible with their families. A lot of y'all ain't doing that, and you call yourself Christians. Some of these folks are out here having family devotions, teaching them false doctrine about the about the Bible. But when's the last time you actually sat your family down and y'all had devotion, you know, on your on your free time? When's the last time that you and your family actually sat around? You, your wife, and your kids actually sat sat around and had a discussion about God's word. I ain't talking about just watching some Christian movie or just listen to a bunch of gospel tracks on Saturday morning. No, I'm talking about you actually sat down and you read that Bible with your children. I'll wait. But I know a lot of you don't do that. And some of y'all are probably watching this video right now. And I bet your children are, are on their computers or their uh, uh, laptops or devices watching something else, something secular. So I basically just wanted to get this out, man, because I, this is... This is the reason why we have so many issues in the church. So many, because we are so, it's almost as if we, we just are so quick to accept foolishness. And that's what just, that's what just kills me sometimes. Some of y'all are just so quick to accept foolishness because somebody calls themselves a Christian. And like I said, I believe you guys do this stuff because you want to be validated. You want to be validated in your own sin. You want to be able to say, oh, huh, I can breathe now because here's somebody out here who's somebody else out here who call themselves a Christian and they doing this stuff. So if they saved, then I know I'm saved. So you can't lie. You cannot lie. Because I used to be like that. When I first got into the faith, maybe my first five years into the faith, Oh, I was like that. Oh, man, you know, somebody else, you know, they went out there and they did this and they did that. Well, you know, maybe I'm not that bad of a Christian. But when I read God's word, sin is sin. And everybody's going to be judged based on their sin and their transgression against God. And you can be sure of that. Well, when judgment day comes and when you're standing in front of him on that throne, you're going to be judged for every single sin. That's Christian unbeliever, Muslim, Jew, Hebrew, Israelite, Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist, everyone is going to stand before that one and only true God, and he's going to judge you for every sin. And trust me, if you are not found washed in the Lamb's blood, Jesus Christ, you reject Christ, you reject the commandments, I mean, you're going to spend an eternity in hell. People are scared to talk about this. And we're living in the 11th hour right now where we cannot play around. We can't just sit back and go, oh, well, you know, uh, well, maybe, um, uh, well, well hold, uh, I, I kind of like them, but I don't think that they're that. No, we can't do any of that nowadays. But anyway, guys, let me go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, you know, do you think that Kurt Franklin was right with what he did? Do you actually think that that he that he needs to, that he deserves a pass? He deserves a pass of, of what happened with him and his son because his son just made him just so angry that we can understand of why he reacted the way he did. Or do you believe that? No, there is no way that a person who has been a Christian all of this time, who claim or profess to be a Christian all this time should be reacting the way that he reacted. No excuse for it. He needs to repent, and he needs to put his faith and trust in Christ. Anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and, and let's pray for Kirk Franklin and his son and that whole family in that situation. 
you know, like, like seriously, I, I prayed for them last night. Um, and I prayed before I made this video. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I just want to make sure that, that we are still praying for folks because prayer does, it, it does a lot. It changes. Um, but anyway, as always like this video, rate it, share it. Uh, once again, comment, subscribe, and you guys have a blessed day.